So hey everyone and welcome to the channel. As always, thanks for stopping by and hanging out for a few minutes. My name is Rich, I'm the channel host and I talk a lot about drones, 3D modeling, autonomous flight, other tech applications as well. And I used to do a lot of travel on this channel, but the channel shifted more toward drone work because that is becoming a bigger part of my business every day. So today I wanted to talk to you about another drone modeling application that's out there for those of us who are interested in doing two and 3D drone models. We all know that drone modeling can get expensive, the software, the hardware, etc. And we're always looking for ways to save a few dollars while still producing really good drone models, right? So I wanted to share with you WebODM, and this is not my primary program that I use for doing drone modeling. I'm actually an Agisoft Metashape user. Recently completed a course on that for subscribers to this channel and for folks in general who are interested in 2 and 3D modeling with drones. After finishing that class up, I finally cleared my head out a little bit, gotten out of that mode, and I've been wanting to talk to you about Web ODM for a while. So let's go look over on the screen here. So ODM, what is it? Open Drone Map. So we've got this software application out there called Web ODM. It's drone mapping software to generate maps, point clouds, digital elevation, uh, 3D models, all from aerial images. Now this is an open source application. So we've got a Windows version, we've got a Mac version, we've got a Linux version as well. And for more information, you can go to opendronemap.org slash webodm. Now for those of you who followed along with me here on this channel, you know that I regularly use Agisoft's Metashape and I actually use the Metashape Standard Edition and the Pro Edition. Now, the Standard Edition is under $200. The Pro Edition is in the thousands of dollars. So it can get expensive very quickly. If you're just trying to do drone mapping and you're looking to do small models, the open drone mapping project might be just for you. So number one, I would suggest actually going over to opendronemap.org, checking them out, and doing a little reading. You can download from them and you can download for free. You can do a manual installation. So if you're a command line kind of person, um, you can figure this out and you can download through GitHub. If you're not up on command line on whatever platform you're using, um, you might want to look into the web ODM installer. You pay some money to them and you get an easy installation setup. So you can actually choose an installer and um, you can do their standard plan, $57 for a Windows machine or $57 for a Mac, or you can do the bundle for $87, which is what I did because I wanted to test this on both Windows and Mac. And I didn't feel like doing everything from command line and using GitHub. So I'm going to arrow back now, and here we go. So we're back at the main page of WebODM. So, I'm going to quickly show you what Web ODM looks like, and I'm going to show you a quick model with only 34 images. We're not going to get into this in a big way today, but what I do want to know in the comments below, are you interested in seeing more about Web ODM? Do you think that you'd like to use it in your drone mapping and modeling process? And if you're interested in that, I'll definitely make some more videos on this. I've been doing some testing with it, and I've got to say, you know, you can build models with it. Is it the best solution for you? Well, that's going to be up to you to decide on. What I can tell you is that I cannot do large models on my iMac or on my Windows machine. Um, I need more RAM, and that's one of the big things that they note um, when you're looking into what you need, the specs for a system. So one of the suggestions I saw was, you know, 32 gigs of RAM. All right, I'm way off on that. But let's take a look over here one more time. I'm going to go to the dashboard. So the Web ODM interface actually runs through your browser application. So whatever web browser you're using, um, Web ODM will actually launch from your web browser. So that's kind of interesting. This is what the dashboard area looks like if you did one of the pay for installs with uh, Open Drone Mapping. And I've got a couple of items that I've run. As a matter of fact, this morning I ran one just to show it and share it with you. And as you'll see here, it says it's completed. I would like to go down below to show you. I tried doing larger maps with this previously. Right here it says 308 images. 
and I kept running into this process, exited with code one, I ran out of RAM. And so it took 28 minutes to find out that it was not going to be a happy thing. Let's look at the one that I made this morning just to share with you. So I only used 34 images. I used an orbit generated with a Mavic 2 Pro and Litchi to gather these 34 images to make an orbital map. Now when I click on here, it actually tells me the date it was created on. Uh, my processing node, because you can actually network systems together uh, for additional processing power. Um, we did the mesh, we were looking to do a 3D model. So it took up here next to 34 images, keep that in mind, 43 minutes and 59 seconds. Um, running that same model on low resolution on Agisoft's Metashape was more like 15 minutes because it's such a small data set, so it went really quick. So right off the bat, WebODM is not as quick as Metashape um, when using the same files. And I think you're gonna need a much more powerful machine to get everything you want at a WebODM. Uh, the total time that it took to build this particular model was 43 minutes and 59 seconds. And let's go ahead and we're gonna take a look at that model. So here we are out on the right hand side. We've got pixelation going on, right? So actually I'm zooming in here and here's my dense point cloud, our 3D model. And it does look like the homes that I've flown recently while doing demos for the other class, uh, for the Metashape class. But, you know, this definitely says to me, yeah, these are homes and, you know, it's, uh, it's definitely a 3D model. Uh, I can actually turn the textured model on as well. And then we actually get the texture overlay so it should look a little better. And there we go, as a matter of fact, it does. That doesn't look too bad at all. So I did, in fact, generate a 3D model with WebODM. Now, features that are in other 3D modeling applications uh, allow you to crop areas, to crop in your dense cloud, to focus on only certain areas. For the moment, I have not found a way to do that on here. And so that might uh, be a problem for me down the road if I wanna trim up and clean up my models. But bottom line, in under an hour with, 40, uh, with 34 images, I was able to generate a 3D model that does look representative of the area where these two under construction homes are. And what can I tell you? It's a model. Um, I'm not super impressed with it yet, but I'm not gonna dive way down the rabbit hole because what I wanna know from my subscribers here, would you be interested in a series on this? This will not be an online class over at Udemy, like my Metashape, this will be a more simple just looking over it at YouTube, so us going through it together. If you're interested in that type of content here, please drop a note down below in the show notes, and we'll put something together. Here's my quick and dirty bottom line on WebODM. From what I've read in their forums, I'm going to need not necessarily a much more powerful machine than this iMac, but I need a lot more RAM. So RAM is the... Um, is the item that jams you up the most. As a matter of fact, I'm grabbing my iPhone because I'd actually done a screen cap um, yesterday when I was looking into this. So I just grabbed a screenshot off of, um, off of one of the forum groups. Uh, if you're building a machine specifically for web ODM, I would recommend more RAM, 32 gigs or more. Uh, use Linux as your operating system instead of Windows as Docker runs better on Linux and uses resources more efficiently. And also use a good solid state drive for faster input output. So one of the things that caught me there right away was minimum of 32 gigs of RAM if you really want something to move these along quickly. So if you are building a machine specifically for doing modeling, um, I think a Pix4D or a Metashape is more resource efficient and you don't need as much. So I've said time and time again on this channel that yes, my iMac is slower for doing these models. And the thing is though, it does not crash while doing the models. Um, it will process them. It will take a very long time if I'm doing large models. By large models, I mean somewhere on the order of a thousand images or more. So, but if we'd like to really get in depth with this, walk through it together, um, and field your questions on web ODM, let me know down below in the comments and we'll start doing that. All right, I'm heading off for the day. I just wanted to share this one with you guys. Um, if you're in the States, 
hey, we're coming up on 4th of July, so I hope you all have a happy 4th. Have some fun flying and do some cool things with family and friends because this is one of my favorite holidays. So I hope you enjoy it too. And we'll see you again real soon. We'll be talking more drones.